Hi everyone. So I'm going to do 15 tips on improving your hi-fi from a man who spent a good 45 years pretty much meddling with hi-fi the whole time. And I've always been tweaking and trying to find how to get a better sound out of things. So I'm going to share that with you now. And it's going to be pretty quick fire because I don't want it to get too uh, long and boring. <coughs> Number one, do not underestimate speaker positioning and also tilting speakers. You have a room that is different to most everyone else's room in dimensions and an amp and a speakers, they have their own sound signature. That's two variables. No one can tell you where those speakers should go because it's always a unique situation. So I would ignore the manufacturer's instructions. Just play around, push them back, bring them forward, see what happens, more bass, less bass. Every time you move those speakers, you're changing the frequencies you're receiving. I mean, it's, it's sort of, you could think, oh, well, the speaker makes the sound it makes. It doesn't. It's just kind of theoretically. You move it, you're getting different sounds. So play around with those speakers. If they're also on the floor and big, I like to tilt them up. You really kind of want that tweeter at your ear level. I would say that, yes. Okay, number two, keep your connections tight. Loose connections, lose signal. Speaker wires, get if you're screwing them on, screw them up tight. If you've got those big speaker terminals, screw them up tight. I like to screw my cartridge in as tight as I dare. Uh, if your phono plugs are loose, I just bite them a little bit, just a teeny bit, squeeze them, get it on snug. Loose wires, loose signal. You know, it's just it's a win, win, win. Keep everything tight. Okay, number three. Find out what's going on with your system. You might have a complicated system with a DAC and a phono and a preamp and a power amp and the speakers. You can lose track of what's a good thing and what's a bad thing. I will tell you a quick story. My friend had a preamp. It was a musical fidelity. You would think it was good. They make good stuff most times. He landed up changing his speakers and his amp multiple times because there's no life in it. He'd read that the preamp was good. Well, I've got the preamp here. The preamp, I'm afraid to say, it's called an M1. I think it's called an M1. It's a fun killer, this preamp. It's a fun killer. Takes out the dynamics, just takes the vocal sound synthetic. It's ruined everything. So he didn't realise what was going on. So do what you can. Get headphones, swap equipment, bypass things. Try to find out what's the best thing in your system. What's, you know, find out if there's any duds in there or things really letting the side down. It's really worth knowing the weakest link. Okay. Uh, number four. One of my favourites. Mix vintage and new. I mean, I'm a vintage person, basically, but I got new gear. It is a great idea, I would say, to mix vintage speakers and modern amps. I mean, I still use old amps, but if you like modern stuff, you want to, you know, don't want to take risk. A vintage amp, a vintage speaker and modern amp. It's a great combo because you can get a big vintage speaker with some size, some scale, some dynamics and some bass. Feed it with some great a great streamer. I'm on using Tidal. And uh, that great signal can really cut through and force great performances out of, you know, big, OK to good speakers. But great signal can just push its way through. So that is a great thing. And, you know, you might buy some speakers for 150, 200 pounds. It's a gamble. But it might be a gamble worth taking because you're only going to get a teeny pair of speakers for £200. I mean, I'll quickly name some names for you, vintage speakers. Spender BC1s, they're about £400. They're gorgeous. Bowers & Wilkins DM4s, they're really nice, about £200. Monitor Audio MA4s, Celestian Ditton 44s, lots of tannoy. There's loads. There's loads. Anyway, let me go on. 
uh, tone controls. Now, if you're a high five person, you probably know you don't want tone controls, but I'm just going to say why. Again, your signal is going through those. Those are like resistors, you know, it's like a, a coil of metal or something to make it louder and uh, softer. You want to cut those out if you can. And the last thing you want is a graphic equalizer. Quickly, an analogy if you've got it with any tone control, boosting bass or treble, it's like putting up the red on your TV. Suddenly you've got these red bits sticking out. You destroy the depth on a TV. You don't see depth anymore because you've got these spots of a certain color. And that's the same for sound if you're boosting certain frequencies. I mean, there's probably like some occasions when I would use it when I've got really tiny speakers. And truth be told, when I was young, I had to treble up for about five years. You know, I had to treble up to uh, to uh, they, uh, like a three o'clock most of the time for about five years. And, you know, I, I, I slowly learned that lesson. But, you know, no controls is tone controls is the best. If you've got tone defeat, press that button. That's a winner. OK, number six. Your room is a big player. I moved house about a year ago. It took me a few months living in this new place before I properly grasped that this room was changing everything and was why certain things sounded a bit better and certain things sounded not so good. Uh, so don't underestimate rooms. It's a massive thing. You might have a highly reflective room, tiles. You're going to get loads more high frequencies. They're going to bounce around. For longer carpets going to absorb high frequencies bigger rooms are good for bigger speakers smaller rooms smaller speakers big speakers small room it's just going to come a big blur most of the time if you go at all loud so very hard for me to detail this because i have all got different rooms but the room is a player and you may be trying to get a sound out of a room that you, you'll never get that can happen too uh, OK, uh, number seven, speaker drivers, the bass units, the mid range and particularly in the vintage things. Keep those tight. I buy loads of vintage speakers. Nine times out of ten, the bass driver is loose. A, a bass driver, again, loose is bad. It can't do its work being loose and it's letting in air and it's trying to vibrate air, but it's not being held firm. So get those old speakers and tighten them up. And if you want, rotate them, rotate them 90 degrees or rotate them 180 degrees. That's good for vintage speakers because they sag a bit and the coil gets out of line. But tight, again, just tightness is great. You know, uh, there's nothing loose. You don't want anything loose in the world of hi-fi. Uh, OK, here's a tricky one. How much money should I spend? This is sort of a silly question. Everyone has a different relationship for money. But I want to say one thing because I know, because well, I've done it and everyone else does it, it doesn't have to happen. You land up, most people land up buying one amp, two amp, three amp, four amps. One pair of speakers, two pair of speakers, three, before they stop or they get something that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, I'm different because I'm just a kind of fanatic. But what I want to say is you could, if you are new to it, just go, forget that, uh, jump the shark, give me something class straight away. I'm not going to I'm going to save money. I'm going to save money because I'm not going to go through multiple amps before I get there. And I think we all want to believe when we read that this 300 pound amp is, sounds really good. For the money, it's not really good. It sounds really good for the money. We all kind of want to believe these things are going to really deliver. And you don't kind of find out until you get them. So if you, have, if you can, go straight for something good. And I would say use it, get it front end rather than speakers. Amp, CD, turntable, streamer, whatever you're using. Uh, because great speakers need good amplification or else it don't work out. Uh, 
something come up about that uh, in the one of the other uh, tips. Okay, now, do you have scratchy pots? Okay, I'm referring to vintage stereos where you go <coughs> volume, balance, bass treble, loads of noise. This is fixable 90% of the time. Some people don't know this. That's it. It's called deoxid. Not WD-40. Deoxid. You can watch this. There's people on YouTube who will show you how to do it. But if you have a vintage amp or any scratchy pots, it is amazing what deoxid can. I've had amps that people have given me. This is rubbish. This is like terrible. <sighs> 10 minutes, deoxid, move the, you know, rotate the the, the, uh, the knobs 20 times, something like that. 90% of the time, scratchy pots. You can totally fix. So don't think, oh, this, this is doomed or this is no good. So uh, that's good. Uh, okay, number 10, matching equipment. What do I mean? Well, I mean a bit like what I just said earlier about amps and speakers. And I'll tell you an example. I had here the other day huge speakers, KEF 105, 12 inch bass, 4 inch mid range tweeter, mass three foot high, meter high. The only thing that made these speakers sound good was the streamer going straight into a power amp. The CD player, my Arkham CD player, the Cambridge CD player, uh, it didn't sound good at all. I thought these speakers aren't very good. I, I was sort of like thinking, what's going on? I was a bit baffled. You gotta have, if you've got really great speakers, you gotta have good source for it. Else is no point. It's not gonna deliver and you'll be disappointed. So the point I'm making here is, there's a general sort of banding idea. It's general and it's kind of loose, but, you can't have huge discrepancies in qualities because it won't work out. If you're going to do anything, have your quality in the front end. And then if your speakers aren't that good or aren't good, at least you're getting the best you can possibly get out of them. But if you've got a bad front end and great speakers, you must be going, well, what's going on here? And you, you kind of won't know. It'll be hard to tell, you know. So, uh, yeah, okay, matching equipment that was. Okay, number 11. And this is kind of, I don't know, the philosophy of sound. Is your system satisfying you? Now, what I'm on about here is, I think, to, for a hi-fi to do something good for you, it's got to give you certain sum qualities in abundance meaning something that is average at everything it just doesn't give you enough of one thing for you to really get involved and enjoy so what do i mean i mean good visceral bass maybe sublime mid-range where vocals sound fantastic big scale you know, from big speakers, a big sound stage. You, you may not get all of these things, and in fact, you won't unless you spend 20, 50,000 pounds. But if you're not getting one or two of them, it's just to me, I can't get involved. It doesn't work. So aim for one of these things in your system, that, or two of these if you can, but you've got to be getting one of even one of them will do, you know. And the rest is okay. I've had I play people lots of different stuff here. If there's great bass, okay mid, okay top, people generally go, ah, oh, that's good. That sounds good. I like it. I'm enjoying it. If I play speakers with a valve amp and the vocals are sublime, people say, wow, that's great because they're tuned into the voice now because that sounds good. Uh, but if if you're getting average of everything i don't think it's you can't there's nothing to get hold of and i don't find it relaxing or enjoyable so i think you have to pursue 
some of these categories, you know, some of these things, you know, with your system. Uh, okay, what do we have now? Number 12. This is really on the subject of reading reviews, information and measurements or statistics, specifications, graph lines of speakers. I may stick my neck out here. I don't think the, the measuring devices needed have even been made to truly say when something sounds good. They can tell you when the curve is like this, so the frequency response is wherever it is, you know, but that does not denote quality of what it sounds like. So don't think you can look at measurements. It's a good sign. Bad, bad uh, speaker curve would be bad, but you can't go, I've seen it, that's gonna be good. Because it can sound, it can really just have other qualities about the sound. It might do the frequency response good, but it's not, you don't like it. It's spiky. It's some, it's, not, it's harsh, you know. So, you know, watch out for measurements. And on a similar subject, number 13, I would say beware of chasing watts. It's easy to think, oh, I'm not happy with this system. I've got 50 watts, I should get 100 watts. I'll tell you the truth. I've got all these amps here. I just look at them and I think that amp has got a nice mid-range. That amp has got a ton of bass. That amp has got sublime top end. That amp has got a big sound stage. I mean, those are the qualities that make it work. And you can't really quantify those things. That's the annoying thing about this whole game the x factor you kind of have to just you might someone might tell you this amp sounds really good or it sounds like that but specification wise you can't really prove it all and also i would say about big wattage big watts can choke small speakers just make them burst at the sides they can't deal with it and of course big watts can sort of flood a room so I, honestly, I don't think about what some of my favourite watts uh, amps are 15 watts, you know, and they're lovely and they'll make a big sound, certainly in an average size room. Not a huge room, that's true, but in an average size room will be just fine. Number 14, and this is a, an interesting one. Are, are you chasing a myth or am I chasing the myth? Is there a myth? Well, there's one myth that I would really want to point out, which has kind of been going on my whole life in a way which is the small speaker that does everything. And it might cost £3,000. Um, and everyone would love this to be true. <laughs> I would love it to be true. I want it. I want to be able to put small speakers on, play them. And everyone would go, Jesus Christ, that's incredible what's coming out of that small speaker. But it is not as good as a big speaker. So it's a kind of a mythic holy grail that we're all hoping can happen and it looks nicer in the living room that's probably true i kind of want to say forget it if you want a big sound get a big speaker and stop dreaming it's all going to come in a box this big i would just say forget it uh, i might be i might be a bit wrong there there might be something out there of course i haven't heard everything but that's my guess, you know, that's my guess. And But it's the thing we want. We kind of want it to exist, you know. It's a myth. Number 15, and you probably know what I'm going to say about this one, which is, it's about the music, man. If you find yourself on the settee, kicking back, having a good time, really getting into the music, maybe you've won. You've won. It's over. Have a break. You've done it, yeah? So kind of, you know, don't forget to enjoy the music. That is, it's all about the music. Okay, so please like and subscribe. Loads more videos on my channel if you're interested in this stuff. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Bye for now.